What's going on YouTube? This is Jerry the Boss here, bringing you my first ever YouTube video. So, I'm not going to lie to you, this is going to be pretty raw. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, but I kind of wanted to step out of my comfort zone and try something new. i uh, had a bunch of time on my hands since the uh, situation in the world that's going on, and I just thought maybe this would entertain me and maybe it'll entertain you too. Uh, this is week one of the ASPL and the ASPL is pretty unique. We, the players being like me and the other people were all put into a pool and the managers of the teams uh, bid for us. So I got bought by the Hammerlock walls, yeah, that's it. And so, when all our team was put together, we had two National Dex players, National Dex players, that would be like, if all the Pokemon were in Sword and Shield as of right now. So, no DLC moves or anything like that, but just if they were all in Sword and Shield right now. Then we had two Gallard XOU, which is like what you could have in the game right now. I am a Gallard X player. So then we had two tier three and below, which is some tiers that the ASBL community came together and voted on. This is not like Smogon tiers or anything like that. Then we had one Ubers player, which is the box art legends and things like that and one LC, which is the baby forms of everything. Um, what I had available to me for week one was Celebi, Decidua, Escavalier, Lapras, Grimmsnarl, Noivern, Rhyperior, Rotom Heat, Terrakion, Toxpex, and Topnull. I feel like I said one of those twice, but if I did, it's okay. So, my opponent is Kladova. I may be saying that wrong, I've never actually asked him, but you know what? We'll find out after this, I guess. Um, he had available to him Beware, Clefable, Excadrill, Gigalith, Jellicent, Curum. Dracozolt, Ninetales, G-Max Orbeetle, Venusaur, and Shiftry. Uh, very, very scary and very offensive just from my eyes looking at it. Um, I expected nothing of what he brought. You can see what he brought on your screen right now to our battle, being the Clef, Kirum, Beware, that side. Um, it's a lot more defensive than I expected. Um, I, I guess I should have expected that because a lot of people weren't surprised at his team, but I was, so maybe that was just my fault. But uh, on to my team, though, for the I had that I had this week. Um, I brought G Max Grim Snarl, Terrakion, Top Null, Rotom Heat, Noivern, and Escavalier, as you can see on your screen. Uh, the G Max Grim Snarl. I love this thing. It looks really cool in game. If you have one, you're, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm running a berry berry on it with the prankster ability, with bulk up, sucker punch, play rough, and drain punch as the four moves. I have 236 in HP, 60 in attack, 136 in defense. 56 in spadef and 20 in speed with an impish nature. Now I know that sounds really complicated and it is for sure, but uh, what this is for is after one bulk up, I can kill no bulk Excadrill with a sucker punch. And that was really important to me because just looking from my perspective, Almost any type of Excadrill can just destroy my team with a little prior chip. It doesn't even, it's not very little chip. 
at all. He can just destroy my team. So I was very, very scared of Excadrill. But um, the bulk also allowed me to live one iron head after a bulk up with the Baberi Berry. So Grimstar is not the bulkiest thing, but whenever you G-Max, the base HP becomes 190, so it does make up for it a good bit. Um, the 20 speed was the speed creep anything that might want to try to speed creep me. I'm pretty sure Clefable is base 60 as well. I don't have it in front of me. So that could have sped crap me with just a few EVs. So I put enough that I thought he wouldn't want to. I sped crap a speed creep, if that makes sense. So then the 56, I think, were left, just the leftovers. And I threw them in Spadef because I didn't need a special attack. Uh, moving on, Terrakion. It's Choice Banded. Uh, just by me looking at his team, fighting and rock coverage is very spammable. So. Especially with Trakion having base 129 attack. It's one of the most devastating mines in the game. Just if you can get it in freely, something something's gonna hurt. And uh, I'm bringing the choice band with justified ability, of course. Uh, close combat, rock slide, stone edge, and stealth rock were my four moves. Uh, I have 252 in attack. 64 in HP, which are the leftovers, and then 192 in speed with a Jolly Nature. 192 in Jolly Nature for Terrakion outspeeds his entire team, so that's good. Don't have to worry about anything outspeeding me except for Scarfers and Sandrush Excadrill. So there's that too. Um, moving on to the next one, Top Null. It's running the Eevee Lot with the Battle Armor ability, its only ability, of course. Uh, flame Charge, U-Turn, Thunder Wave, and Roar are the moves. 252 in HP, 24 in Attack, 36 in Defense, 76 in Spadef, and 120 in Speed. Uh, this is going to be my dedicated switch into Excadrill. I was, like I said, very terrified of it. The Flame Charge is uh, there so that it'll do a good chunk to Excadrill, about 40%, I think, maybe a little more. And with the speed I have, after the plus one boost that you get with Top Null, I would outspeed Adamant Excadrill, and so I could hit it again for some good damage. I think after the Life Orb hit that I mentioned earlier, it would also die to Flame Charge, or it had a chance to or something. I'm not sure. But moving on, we have Rotom Heat. It's running the Leftovers and the Levitate ability. Pain Split, Foul Play, Overheat, and Volt Switch. This was going to be my main switch in to the, the Sun Sweepers and Drake Assault. So, as you know, Drake Assault's pretty much an auto lose if you don't have a ground top, but this was my one way of working around it. I didn't think Rhyperior had a very good matchup against him with the Sun Core. Very scared of the Sun Core, but he didn't bring it. So, anyway, the. EVs are 176 in HP, 164 in Spadef, and 168 in Speed with a Calm Nature. Um, the 168 in Speed allows me to outspeed Adamant Dragazolt, which was, you know, the main threat. And uh, I can't really remember, I'm not going to lie, I can't remember how the Spadef worked out, but I know it had to do with Sun Sweepers. That was the main reason I brought Rotom Heat over anything else. So, yeah. Uh, Neumern. Heavy Duty Boots with the Frisk ability. Taunt, Roost, Defog, and Air Slash were the moves I was rocking on this thing. It has 208 in HP, 68 in Defense, 160 in Special Attack, and 72 in Speed uh, with a Timid Nature. So this allowed me to outspeed his entire team. It hits the same speed mark as Terrakion, so that's good. Um, the 208 HP and 68 defense were uh, skillfully calculated so that I could live 
a life or Brock slide from shift tree. I definitely remember EV in for that. And, uh, the HP just helped in general with everything I needed for the Spadef. Uh, this was kind of just a good utility mod in general. I don't think it had like a necessary, necessarily like any specific reason it was here. It definitely kept, um, beware from spamming fighting moves too so that was a pretty big plus for it coming this week um escavalier so when i built escavalier it had leftovers which um looking at the matchup i thought would be good at first but then i changed at the last minute to okaberry and the reason i did that was since Escavalier was the main check to Clefable and Curum, I thought I might as well have a way to limit fire moves from them. If I said that the hardest way possible, but uh, since I was really scared of the Sun team, I thought he might bring Weather Ball Curum in the Sun, which turns it into a base 100 power fire move if you didn't know. And I was very terrified of that. So um, I brought the Okaberry with shell armor so I couldn't get crit. I had Iron Head, Taunt, Rain Dance, and Knock Off. Taunt was there so I could uh, keep the Curum from pressure stalling me. Iron Head, obviously, to hit the cleft and Curum for super effective damage. Knock off just to get rid of items and rain dance again to change the weather to anything but what he wanted was basically my only reasoning. 252 in HP, 60 in defense, and 196 in spadef with a careful nature. That was to, I think it was like a 50% chance to 3 hit KO or something with Ice Beam. I definitely know that. All my calcs for the EVs were with the leftovers in effect, so the spread's kind of just there. But yeah, so there's that. All right, so again, this I'm just gonna break the fourth wall for you guys. Uh, this battle was a month ago, so if I seem kind of surprised uh, about what happens, then there you go. But uh, let's get into it. So. He leads off the top and all against the Gigalith that he leads. So, um, I was really scared of the Excadrill, seeing what he brought. Um, I figured that he would lead that based on what I had. Uh, it looked like it did a lot of work if I was him, so that's where I was coming from on that. Uh, looking back on it from my side, if I could do this over again, I probably would lead off with Terrakion because it just pressures his team. He doesn't know my set, you know, from the start. So I could kind of just do a lot with it. Just kind of click a button and see how he responded, if that makes any sense. Uh, but that didn't happen, so let's see what happens. Um, I Thunder Wave just to throw something off. I didn't have a move to hit Giglith too well, but he stone edges, which kind of surprised me right here on the next turn. I was getting letting it get a little ahead of me. Um, so, stone edge, I didn't know what he was going to do, but I definitely didn't think you would just stone edge, but uh, looking back on it, it kind of makes sense. I'm Clad's really good, just throwing that out there. Clad, if you watch this, you're the best, dude. So... Um, I'm sure he noticed from the start that Top Null was one of my only defensive mines and probably the only thing that could take a hit from Excadrill. So I'm sure he had that in the back of his mind. And I imagine that's why he's stone edged. He didn't really have a reason to switch out, but I just, I guess I just thought he would. So I roared. Kind of worked out either way because it got him into something he didn't want to be into since he didn't want to switch, if that makes sense. Um, but on this turn, I didn't really want to get a will -o eat a will o wisp here, but I knew I'd be faster since I had so much speed. Jellicents don't normally run as much speed as I'm running on top and all. Let me get some water. So, I you turn out, didn't really know what he was wanting to do. Uh, Clyde's really tough, I'm telling you, so I was just trying to feel him out here. 
So take a little sand damage. Reveals these leftovers, which is good. Uh, U turn. So he goes back into Gigalith, and I drop in Terrakion. Okay, so. As y'all heard earlier, I have Stealth Rocks on here, so that's going to be my play. I think it's going to be really important to get Stealth Rocks up. His only remover is Excadrill, which uh, I've never been a fan of using Excadrill and Draft for hazard removal because it just hits so hard on the offensive side. But I figured it would be harder for him to remove hazards later than it would be for me to get up hazards right now. Um, I didn't think you would want to risk his Gigalith right now, so I'll just throw up my rocks, and we'll see what he switches into. Okay, he switches into Jellicent. That should be really important in my mind for later on. Um, but I'll switch into Noivern, resist the Scald, uh, doesn't really care about Will-O-Wisp. Uh, so I just throw off an air slash just to test some damage and see what he's what he's packing over here. I don't have the U-turn, so I can't U-turn out. Uh, U-turn might have been cool looking back on it, uh, but really that sun core just really had me scared. So that affected my prep a lot. Uh, but now I'll switch out into top and all because I didn't really have anything else that I wanted to take the hit and. Uh, I'm pretty sure I uh, roar here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, see the mold breaker on Excadrill? That's super important. So I kept thinking that it was going to be Sand Rush, but since I saw that it was mold breaker, I was like, all right, so Scarf. Maybe he's Scarf. Because, like I said, his speed tiers are pretty slow, which made me think he might be Scarf Excadrill. It's his fastest mine. No, it's not. That's a lie. Oh, I look like such a clown now. As fast as Mons Kirim on his team right now that he brought. Uh, so, yeah, he roared. Or I roared. This is spiraling. Okay, so I think I U turn here. I wouldn't doubt if I did. Yep, U turn here. Go out into Rotom Heat. Okay, so I thought this was pretty cool. So, like I said, you know, I thought he was. Uh, I thought he might be Scarf, so I knew that I had a couple options. So, I wrote him he, knowing it's Mold Breaker, I could see where you're like, oh, you know what, that don't make any sense. But, in my mind, I was like, I can go wrote him, double out into Noivern, because he's not, I don't think he would rock move when he's Mold Breaker. Why would you not EQ? It's four times effective stab. Like, he I probably would have just forfeited if he used a rock move here. But I expected him to EQ, so I doubled out into my Frisk Noivern so I could know 100% what his item was. Boom. There it is. Okay, Lumberry. Did not expect Lumberry, but... He doesn't really know my set yet. I could be packing Flamethrower pretty easily. That's a fairly common move on Noivern. So I didn't really expect him to stay in here. And I make an aggressive double into Terrakion. And I catch the Gigalith, which is pretty good. Um, I hit close combat here. Just to, I was trying to get rid of the Gigalith. Like I said, I'm still trying to fill out what Clad's wanting to do. He's so I didn't want to just make predictions all over the place. So he switches into Jellicent. The Chobleberry, Chobleberry on the Beware really caught me off guard too. Uh, I could see it though. Uh, it'd be like late game tech for Terrakion. I know in talking to Cloud after, he was very scared of Terrakion, which is fair. So I was glad I got the Chobleberry off of the Beware pretty early but uh so anyway i don't want to stay in here so i switch out into noivern and he strength saps to get his health back so um what i do here i think is i roost did i roost yes i roosted okay so i made a misplay here um i went into terrakion yep okay so this was a this was a misplay so he knows that last time I doubled hard from Noivern to Terrakion. 
to try to catch the giglets. So looking back on it, this was not my smartest play because you know giglets would typically run coverage to hit other things like steals, so earthquake, superpower, things like that. So he catches me with it and hits an EQ. So my biggest win con right now, or one of my biggest win cons, is at 12%, takes 6% from rocks. So unless I get these rocks going, I only have two more switch-ins to do work with Terrakion. So that's going to, that affects me a lot as the game goes on. Um, he gets paralyzed here, and I close combat again. Uh, so... I can see where the Jellicent play was fairly obvious, and that'll also come into play as the game goes along, but I just thought it was best to try to get rid of the Gigalith if he would let me, and he did, so there's that. So I know he can't have rocks anymore either. I'm not expecting x to be carrying rocks too, so I was like, I need to defog the first chance I can get. So switch out into Noivern, take the Jellicent hit. Uh, he hexes, which is pretty crazy does a good amount of damage and I'm trying to defog these rocks away I'm trying to keep keep it so that Terrakion can at least do something in this battle right so this kind of gets a little stally here uh, just roosting back uh, roosting uh, up every turn and things like that uh, I get to where I feel pretty comfortable about it and I defog the rocks away okay so Terrakion's back in it so I get down to 1%, and I've been getting some fairly low rolls on the Hex, I guess. And uh, it kills me with burn. So that was unfortunate, but it wasn't in the world. Uh, I kind of expected it, to be honest. But it gave me the opportunity to kind of reset and so just stay in that same cycle that I was in of switching from Noivern to... Terrakion and things of that nature. So I'm into Rotom here. I really expect him to go into Kyurem. It's one of the best Rotom Heat switch ins to ever exist. So he does. And I foul play here, which I, looking back on it, I really don't know why I did that. Um, if I had to guess, and looking at my team here, I think my only electric coverage was Volt Switch. Yes, it was. So I think, looking back on it, I was scared of him staying in. So I just foul played, which it wasn't the worst play ever. I had a dedicated switch in and a scavalier, but I would have preferred to vault switch looking back on it. If it's, if I could redo it, I would vault switch. So anyway, into a scavalier. I taunt him here so he can't pressure stall me. And uh, he dragon pulses. I was like, okay. So that's a little odd. I iron head. And he goes out into where. And I tried to knock off the lefties off the Kirim. Because, well, he didn't have an item. I think he was metronome. I didn't ask him. So I was trying to find out what item he was. Or maybe into the Jellicent and knock off its leftovers. I really didn't expect him to go into the where. Uh, so. Uh, so he went. In, he goes into Beware, and I decide to sack off my top null here, and uh, that's pretty important for the Excadrill. Uh, how I play around the Excadrill later, I'm kind of committing to just winning with my offense, and uh, so the top null dies. Of course, he gets a little health back. And bring in Terrakion. So here, okay, so here, he switched his Jellicent in twice to my Terrakion. Not directly, but he did directly switch it in once after I popped the Chopper Berry. But he did after Gigalith died. Which, of course, you could be like, oh, well, he knew you were banded. Close combat wasn't going to do anything. But I still should have hit the rock move because at this point like I said like I just said I committed to winning with offense and when you commit to winning with offense you got to play offensively right so I should have made the offensive move and click stone edge or at least rock slide you know to get a little damage off and see what it was going to do but I didn't 
So I had to switch into Rotom and take a Scald, which would just put me behind the eight ball a lot. Uh, I think I Volt switched this time. Now a Pain Split in. Okay, that was a good play. I agree with that. So then I hard switch into a Scavalier because I don't know if he's what he's carrying right now. I didn't want to take a big hit in the face. So Iron Head here. Have to switch out and into the Beware. Again, like that really killed me about the Rock Slide just for momentum and making Clad think. This time I definitely Volt switched. Yep. Okay. So now I'm into a Scavalier. Goes out into Beware. Double into Grimstar, uh, dropping in the G-Max. So, um, I'm sure if you're watching me, you've literally watched any other PokeTuber ever. And uh, Joey and Envy, I think right now, are using G-Max Grimstar in APA. And Envy used it in WDBE. And I think it was the kill leader. So, I'm really trying to... Put in some work with this thing and i know it's a threat so <sighs> messed up my screen so i get it dropped in right here um I'm, I'm thinking i'm like okay so i know he's got to be unaware clef just by the look of the team i figured he'd be unaware so i was like there's no point in bulking up right now because it ain't gonna do anything with clef so I'm going to play rough for damage. Sure thing. He's max HP, max defense, just for Grimstone. Okay. So, I think, I, yeah, I switched out. Okay, this is where the rust is coming in. Okay, so I switched out. Volt switch out here. Please tell me I volt switched. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, I go back into a Scavalier. Why did I go into a Scavalier? Dang. Okay, this is me being mad at myself. So, uh, just ironed head here. Bad play on my part. Have to switch into Rotom and take the CC and die. Okay, so this is where me playing it safe really killed me. Um, dang it. So, I should have switched from the... Instead of doubling from the... Let's see here. Instead of Volt switching from the Rotom to the Escavalier, I should have went into Terrakion or Grimstone. Like either one, because he was in with the Curum. And, of course, the Curum could have been carrying coverage for both. But I knew at this point that he wasn't Scarfed. So I really had no reason to go into Terrakion. So I'm pretty mad about that. But, anyway. I G-Max up here, because, like, why not? I think I can kill Clef with two max Starfalls. So, I go for it there. Do 42%. Here's the Berry Berry. Does 21%. He had no attack. So, I had to max Knuckle there to kill. I'm pretty sure. So, here, he protects on the Clefable to stall out turns. I think you only take 20% from a max move. Uh through a protect oh by the way sorry about the g max i really can't do anything about it uh for some reason this replay i played it like five times before i recorded this but it never showed so i don't know anyway so i think it only does 20 percent through the protect so it just does pitiful damage and he's leftovers at that so i have to switch out into escavalier and just Grasping at straws here for anything that I can do to win. Double into Terrakion, finally. Probably a little too late. I think I clicked the rock move here. No, I clicked CC. That was a terrible move. Okay, so have to switch into Grimstone, let it get burned. Everything on my team is a physical attacker. Will-O-Wisp was the freest move ever. Double into a Scavalier to catch the Clefable. I think I double back into Terrakion. Yes, okay, so now I click Stone Edge, finally. But honestly, looking at it, it's a little too late. I should have been making these more aggressive plays when I sack top null, because that's when I committed to the offense. But I didn't do that, so. Um, it's a two-hit KO, so I just click it again. It does 35% to Warrior. See, I should have been clicking this the whole time, but... Anyway, let's just let's just go through this. So he drain punches the Grim Snarl. Take a little burn. 
missed the play rough. So I don't think this mattered specifically at this point. It's like it's not going to kill the beware. I don't think he was max HP and fluffy. But I didn't calc it, obviously, because I was I was getting a little tilted at this point with the, the chat and everything else. But it could have at least put it in range of Tarax moves, rock moves specifically, because if you look, I was going to have to spam rock moves anyway, but I miss, so it's whatever. Drain Punch, and take me out. Tracheon, you're my last hope here. Uh, just close combat, because I was ready to get the battle done with, I'm pretty sure. And kill the Kirim. Switch him into a Scavalier. Strength saps to get all the way back up, so that's kind of like just sealing the deal here. Will Wisp on this Cavalier finally get to knock it off. Too little, too late though, and I'm gonna lose. Okay, so switched in to a Skull just to see if he would strength sap or something. I don't even know, but uh, yeah, that's the end of it. I think he switches into Beware to let it take a kill, which I, you know. That's his prerogative, I guess. But anyway, so overall, is a is a much different battle than I thought how it was going to go. Uh, all my respect goes to Clad. He's a great battler, and uh, he deserved it. So we'll have to bounce back next time. And uh, yeah, uh, just thanks for watching this first YouTube video, of mine, and. Uh, Hopefully you'll stick around, subscribe, and like, and comment, and all those things. Uh, yeah, peace.